This is Beyond the Build, Succeed with SEO in Higher Ed, presented by moi. I'm the principal SEO at Yoast. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, we do a WordPress, bleh, can't talk, WordPress plugin that helps with SEO. We are part of the Newfold Digital family. I would be in trouble with our PR people if I did not put this slide up. All right, I have a lot of slides and I only have 20 minutes, so let's get into it. Um, I was going to do my usual, the tree falls in the forest, but I asked ChatGPT to translate that to higher ed, and it came up with, if a professor delivers a brilliant lecture, but no students are there to hear it, does it have an impact? And that's really going to translate to how SEO is important to higher education, because I want everyone to, I don't, uh, how do I phrase this? I feel very bad <laughs> when people spend a lot of money and a lot of time building out websites, but they don't take advantage of the free traffic that organic SEO can provide, and they end up spending more money than they need to on paid channels. Um, it's it's just not it's not good for your budgets, and you're also then missing out on some opportunities to help. I don't want to say manipulate the narrative, but massage the narrative when it comes to what AI knows and understands about your site and your institution. So people will ask, do EDUs even need organic SEO? Because EDUs, especially if you've been around in the internet for a long, long time, like I have, not that I'm old or anything, but I am, the, the common the common beliefs are that EDUs don't need organic SEO because the strength of the EDU top level domain is so great that anything you do, as long as it's got a .edu at the end of it, is just going to run roughshod over everyone else in the search engine results. And that's really not even true. There's a lot of competition these days, not, not even just from the, um, you know, the private sector and the for-profit organizations, but amongst the EDUs and in the uh, education community for students, for funding, for all kinds of different things. Um, even, in, even in the same town, when you're looking at local, you could have recruitment conflicts between the large university and the community colleges. You know, they all need students. We can't just, you can't just seed all of your students to the big university because you happen to be a community college that is in close proximity to the big university. So how do you compete? You take advantage of the organic SEO opportunities that you have available to you. It'll help with recruitment. It'll help with program promotions, so specific programs that you want to make sure people are aware of. If your university is known for one particular strength and you know you've got a very strong but not as well-known program, you can highlight that program. You could highlight some athletic departments that maybe don't get as much attention and love as your standard, you know, football, really football and basketball are the, are the big two I can think of. Making sure that information about the university, whatever it is, is being disseminated. Um, if you, I don't want to say controlling the narrative, but it is a lot about controlling the narrative or at least making sure your voice is heard. Enhancing reputation, alumni engagement, local SEO. Local is very important when you want to not only attract local students, but make sure that the community is engaged and aware of what's going on at the university. You don't want to you don't want to keep the bubble so tight that you're only ever getting people from the university. You also want to make sure that you're inviting in the people who live around you because it's a nice thing to do. Promote events, international outreach because those international students are important to attract, stay ahead of competitors, and of course, promote your online programs and courses. Online programs and courses get promoted heavily in paid if you can have an opportunity to increase your reach with free channels, why would you not take advantage of that? So ultimately, organic SEO is going to reduce your reliance on paid marketing channels, and it's going to ensure that your side of the story is making it into the AI knowledge base. The AI knowledge base thing is, it's very new in terms of SEO strategy, but the thing that I have 
noticed recently in my research is that if you are not presenting a counter narrative, whatever the predominant narrative is, will be what AI regurgitates to the searchers as truth. If the only thing it can find is that you suck, you suck is what they're going to say. So you want to make sure that you're getting your side of the story, presenting that counter narrative to the search engines so that they can incorporate that into the LLMs and into the, the knowledge that their AI is operating from. So advanced SEO on WordPress. I'm going to guess from the audience that most of you have already chosen WordPress. And I think this is a great choice for your projects. It's got an SEO friendly structure, easy content creation and management, far easier than having anything custom built in house. Even if you have a great computing department, you don't want to rely on something custom built because eventually the guy who built it or the lady who built it is going to move on and you're going to lose that you're going to lose that institutional knowledge. You're going to lose that, that, that creative. You're going to lose the person who knows how to run it is basically what happens. Um, and then there's the extensive plugin system, which is great for SEO, performance optimization. There's so many things that you might want to do with your website that you're going to be able to do easily, quickly, thanks to the plugin ecosystem on WordPress. Some of the other advantages are WordPress is almost always, assuming you have a good theme, mobile optimized out of the box, which is great because as of the beginning of July, Google is no longer crawling websites with anything other than the mobile emulator. So what this means is if your site is missing information or doesn't function correctly in the mobile view, anything that doesn't work does not count. Doesn't matter if you can get to it on desktop, it doesn't matter if you've had it forever. If it doesn't work, they just won't know about it. So it's very important that you're paying attention to that mobile first optimization. There's built-in SEO features that are native to WordPress now, like automatic sitemap generation, RSS feeds for everything, which is great for syndication. And the community support is also tremendous. You're going to be able to always find people that can work on WordPress. It's not like you've got a wizard who's coming out through the university right now who helps you out with things, but then that person is going to graduate and leave. So unless you can hire them, which you probably can't if they're a wizard, they're gonna to wanna to go off to California and make tons of money. You're going, to, you're going to need to be able to have a steady stream of people that can help you maintain and work on it. Technical SEO is great in WordPress. Schema, there's plenty of plugins that can help you incorporate that. And then there's lots of plugins that can help with social, social media integration, which is especially important now that Google has started favoring not just social media, but also those forums like, and I guess they're kind of social media, like Reddit and Quora, where they're getting an unnatural amount of attention in the SERPs. So how do you choose the right tools to work with? The essential WordPress plugins that I recommend for SEO are, I would be fired if I didn't say Yoast SEO, but I do, I do recommend it. And I personally use it. I was a user for a decade before I, be, I started working here. So I'm not lying when I say that I do recommend this. You're also going to want performance optimization plugins like Jetpack, which is made by Automatic, or WP Rocket, which I think is made by WP Media. There's a plugin called Broken Link Checker which can go through your site and find all of your broken links and help you get those cleaned up rather than finding them long, long, long after the fact. This will help you get them quickly and right away before they become problems. There's another plugin called Internal Link Chooser. I really like this. It's not, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I'm, I'm just a user and I'm a fan. It will help you with your internal link placements because it does them automatically. It doesn't just recommend internal links, it actually places them for you. And there's another plugin, I believe it's free, called Simple History, which I like for sites where you have multiple people, many, many people working on creating content or making changes. It keeps track of who made what change so that if something breaks, you can go and locate the thing that broke it and roll it back. So I do like that one. There are others that do it. 
these happen to be free, so I just wanted to put up the, the basic group of things that I, I prefer. So non-WordPress tools for SEO. These would be things that operate outside of your WordPress environment. There's a Chrome extension called SEO Quake, which can do some very quick, a very quick overview of the important bits of a, of a page. It can tell you things like how many heading tags you have and what they are. If there's no H1, it'll let you know. Um, it, it does a lot of cool stuff. It's free. I would recommend getting that if you're running Chrome. The Google PageSpeed Insights is also a Chrome extension that will help you understand what's slow on your page. Um, if your mobile version isn't working very well, it'll point out that you have way too many huge images or you've got broken JavaScripts. It'll help you out with those things. You should have, if not Google Analytics, some kind of analytics tool. Google Analytics is, of course, free, but I know there are tools available and some institutions might have licenses where you can use like Adobe Analytics or something along those lines. You should regardless have a Google Search Console account because this is going to give you other information about who's clicking on what keywords, things that you're not going to necessarily be able to get from an analytics program. You will also want a Bing Webmaster Tools account, which is similar to Google Search Console, but lives in Bing. Bing has a lot of tools in their, their BWT that Google Search Console used to have um, and some that it never had. So I think if you have not yet played with Bing Webmaster Tools, I would recommend giving that a try. For crawling your site and doing inventories and technical SEO audits, I would recommend either Screaming Frog or Sitebulb. They're very similar. Um, one's a little bit more graphical in its interface. So if you're someone who loves Excel and Excel is your jam and you wake up thinking spreadsheets, Screaming Frog is probably something you're going to like. If the thought of having to stare at spreadsheets gives you the hives, you might want to lean towards Sitebulb. And then for keyword research, I would recommend either SEMrush or Ahrefs, or if you just call it Ahrefs, uh, both, both very good tools. Um, I know SEMrush does have a free trial and a limited free version. Ahrefs, I think, might have more in terms of, of free, but if you do have a little bit of extra cash in your budget for a license, either of those would be a very good option. Technical SEO best practices. Just real high level, if you do nothing else, make sure your site structure and your navigation is tight. Your menus and your navigation have to be crawlable. They should be intuitive and logical. You don't need to include a link to every single page on your site, unless it's a very small site, in your navigation. It's not necessary. Silos are good, making sure that you have the content grouped naturally and logically, great, but you don't need to have fancy menus, especially fancy menus that might only exist in JavaScript. I know every search engine can render JavaScript. This is not my, this is not the problem with, with the JavaScript. The problem with the JavaScript is when the search engines go to execute it, they do a two process crawl on your website. The first process that goes through and is relatively immediate is just taking everything off the page that it can see. It saves the execution and the rendering of anything that needs execution and rendering for a second step of the process. We don't know when that happens and it varies depending on the site. So if something is important and it needs to be communicated to the search engines, it should not require anything to be rendered or executed in order for the search engine to see that. So I would make sure that you have menus that are relatively plain text and don't need fancy JavaScript to function. Finally, making sure that you're including self-referential links inside your body copy is going to be super, super helpful. Um, it, it, it spreads the link love around your site, so very important. Mobile optimization and responsive design, like I said, Google is only sending out the mobile crawler. So if your site does not work on mobile, it's not going to work, period. If you have a desktop version that is responsive and functions correctly in mobile, that's really all you need to do. But you have to make sure it functions in mobile. Page speed and, and performance is super important. You want to make sure you have fast load times. You're serving static assets from a CDN with an efficient cache policy. You don't want layout shifts. 
and you want to reduce your reliance on third-party scripts. Choose a lightweight theme. Don't have unnecessary bells and whistles. And I like to tell people, don't overblend your blog. You don't need to bedazzle your blog. Sometimes simple is better. Here's a quick technical checklist that you can print out later it, just to make sure, because I know I'm going to get tight on time here. Let's talk real quick about keyword research and content optimization. The reason we do keyword optimization in research is so that we can generate ideas for content. We want to know what people are interested in. We want to match the content that we're writing to our audience. We also want to use the way, the language that people use to search for things. One of the examples I give is that uh, you wouldn't have the newspaper write about a papal visit because no one says papal. They say the Pope's visit. We talk about the Pope's visit, we write about the Pope's visit because people are going to search for the Pope's visit. Free tools for keyword research. You can use Google Trends. SEMrush, again, is good for keyword research. Yoast has a SEMrush integration, so if you have Yoast, we can pull in some SEMrush things for you. Ahrefs has free SEO tools. And then you can also use the AIs, ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, ask it questions. If, if you were going to search for X, how would, you, how would you type that into a search engine? What kinds of things are you interested in knowing about why? The AIs are great at this kind of stuff, so feel free to utilize those as well. Google Trends is awesome. If you haven't used it, just go to trends.google.com and try it out. It's going to give you things like when the last time something spiked was, what the current amount of, of uh, search volume is for something. It can let you compare things. How do people search for broccoli rob versus uh, broccolini? Turns out that uh, broccolini is more highly searched. Also turns out that most of the country calls it broccolini. It'll give you ideas on related, related topics, related queries. You can sort by, are they rising? What's just consistently high? Tons of information. It'll also tell you, let's see, do, 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 oh, SEMrush. SEMrush can do similar things with the keyword research. It's actually a pretty good keyword research tool. It breaks it out by global volume. I love the questions that it provides. You can take these questions and use that to build content. Just answer the questions. It's, a, it's great for generating content ideas. It'll also show you how you rank and if you rank in the special search results. So how are we going to use these keywords? We're going to weave the keywords that we've selected into the meta title and into the headline, into the description, into the body copy, into the image, alt, um, the alt attributes. And also repeat those words then in your social media posts. One of the biggest things I see people make mistakes on with their social media is that they're using totally different language than they use in the article. If you think people are going to search for those words in the article, it makes logical sense that they're using those search terms in social media as well. You want to be consistent with your messaging across all channels. The questions that you find, answering those questions is a great way to increase content in your post. Introduce the question and the answer in a subheading like an H2 or H3 and then rephrase the question in the body copy and provide the, first, the answer right there in that first sentence beneath the subheading. This is a great way to get to become one of those answers in the search engine results. Engaging and relevant content is super important, but above all else, you have to be helpful. We're gonna use that keyword research to provide answers and information that your users need or maybe want to know or maybe don't know that they wanna know. Make sure you're providing unique perspectives and adding value though. Just repeating or repackaging something that someone else has already said isn't going to help you rank. Value is always going to win over sales and gimmicks. Google had a helpful content uh, update that went out and got rid of a lot of spam. They're looking for unique value-added content, so make sure you're being helpful. For future-proofing, you want to adapt to the AI and the machine learning. Focus on user experience because above all, Google wants to make sure that it's giving the users a great experience. So if you're focused on providing a great experience, you'll be rewarded. Structured data like schema is very important to incorporate into your pages. Don't get caught up in the, oh, Google's not favoring this now, or oh, they've taken, they've taken the FAQ schema out of the SERPs. They did that for like 10 minutes, then they brought it back. Just because they're not 
emphasizing something right now doesn't mean it's not important. Anything that helps them understand your message is going to be good. Look at voice search optimization. So it's not necessarily how people are typing in their search queries, it's how they're vocalizing their search queries. Write your content to address that. Keep your content fresh, keep it relevant, and keep it up to date and accurate, which is super important. And then make sure you're just keeping up with the algorithm changes. So in summary, we want to make sure that we've got a strong foundation built with WordPress and with plugins. We're employing effective content strategies that we've thoroughly researched. We're keeping up with the current SEO trends and we're embracing the future, like with AI and all of the new stuff that's coming down the pipe. That's it for my talk. Thank you very much. I'd love to stay in touch.